welcome. It's that time again. Here we go. It's Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97, if you're in Manchester, streaming at WMNHradio.org. And, of course, on the Facebook, on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And, of course, you can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options and social media links and contact info and show archives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hello to our friends at Raw Talk Online and Tomorrow Radio. Today is Tuesday, September 14, 2021. And uh, nice to have you all with me. Uh, of course, uh, before we get rolling, uh, I want to remind you we are proudly sponsored by the Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan at 1000 Elm Street. Don't go there today because Monday and Tuesday is their weekend, but they are open Wednesday through Sunday. And they have uh, delicious gourmet pretzels. They have craft beer. They have wine. Every Thursday night, they have trivia night hosted by the great Bill Cini. Friday nights, our friend Grant Lampton, who will be here today in the second hour, for his weekly Tweakonomics segment, not as Grant Lampton, but as Mike Sutterth. But, of course, on Friday nights, he transforms into Grant Lampton and performs live at the Hop Knot from 7 to 9 p.m. They've got a lot of other great stuff uh, that goes on there, too. Uh, they're very involved in the community and other businesses and uh, really amazing what they do. So I always say great food, great service, and such a wonderful family that owns and operates it. And we're so honored and privileged to have them as a sponsor. Um if you hadn't heard the news yet, by the way, if you're wondering why I opened uh, with a couple of uh, Norm McDonald uh, clips, uh, Norm McDonald passed away. Uh, news broke within just the last couple of hours. Uh, actually, it popped up uh, when I was doing my show prep. And uh, age 61, apparently he had a, a decade-long battle with cancer that he kept very, very private. Um, I, I guess his own family, uh, many of them were not aware that he was ill. So, uh, so it was quite a shock because obviously, um, you know, he kept it, kept it really, really quiet. Um, so pretty bummed out, uh, as I know a lot of us are Norm McDonald, in my view, really kind of underrated. Um, you know, he's one of those comics who not everyone, not everyone liked him. Not everyone thought he was funny. He had a very he had a certain uh, kind of delivery that wasn't for everyone. You know, he's not like uh, he wasn't like a Jerry Seinfeld who, you know, anyone can get what he's doing and understand the presentation. Norm had had such a dry delivery and uh, he was unique in that way in the sense that no one really sounded like him or had his cadence uh, or his way of, of sort of constructing a joke. And um, so not everyone. Not everyone appreciated Norm Macdonald, and that's fine. Everyone has different tastes. You're not, you know, not criticizing anyone who didn't uh, enjoy Norm Macdonald or wasn't a fan. But personally, I adored him. Uh, he would definitely be in my top five as far as comedians of all time. Absolutely. Uh, I thought he was underrated, and I, I just, uh, one of the funniest people on the planet in my view. And uh, so very, very sad to see this news um, I became a fan, as as I'm sure many people did, particularly people from my generation, uh, back in the 90s when he was on Saturday Night Live. And for a number of years, maybe five years, four years, five years, he was the anchor on Weekend Update, which growing up had always been my favorite segment of Saturday Night Live, Weekend Update. But Norm MacDonald, he was, um, he was kind of an unusual choice in that well, he sort of looked like an anchor man at that time, but... But he didn't. He didn't talk like one. And just the way he would deliver the jokes, I, I just, I, I was smitten immediately. I just thought, t to me, not only is he one of my, would he easily be in my top five of favorite comedians of all time, my number one favorite Weekend Update anchor of all time. I thought Norm was the best. He ended up getting fired. Um, first, they they removed him. I don't know if if people how many people know this story you can google it uh i might get some of the details wrong but um he uh, so they they actually removed him from weekend update even though i mean i thought he was hilarious and most people i know who watched snl thought he was hilarious as the weekend update anchor but there there was an nbc executive named don olmeyer and olmeyer apparently told lauren michaels who runs at snl 
told him, get him. Th- this is the story that's out there. Um, Norm MacDonald himself never fully confirmed it, but the story was Don Olmeyer told Lauren Michaels, get him out of there. I don't think he's funny. And Lauren Michaels, who normally, this will make sense when I get to the, the conspiracy theory part of it. Uh, Lauren Michaels, who normally, as far as anyone knew, uh, didn't let anyone at NBC really tell him what to do. Norm, I'm, I'm sorry, Lauren acquiesced and pulled Norm McDonald out of Weekend Update. And then he was a regular cast member appearing in sketches, but he was no longer the Weekend Update anchor. They replaced him with, um, oh, I'm blanking on his name now. Who was the next guy? I can totally picture him. I'm blanking on his name. I also thought he was very funny. Can't remember his name. Somebody in the chat room will know who replaced Norm MacDonald. But then, uh, but this was like a mid-season thing. Like right in the middle of the season, they replaced him on Weekend Update. And then so he finished out his contract. I guess his contract was up that year or maybe it was a year-to-year thing. He was, you know, appearing in sketches but was no longer on Weekend Update. Whereas when he was a Weekend Update anchor, you'd very rarely see him in a sketch. Um... No, not Seth Meyers, Varonette. Uh, there was somebody before. There was somebody in between. This would have been, th- this would have been, uh, this will, goes a, a little ways back. Um, he had been on MTV before that. Oh, it bugs me. I can't remember his name. Someone will know. Anyway. Nope, not Dennis Miller. Dennis, Mil- Dennis Miller was also great, Tony. I loved uh, Dennis Miller. Um, but he was actually before Norm MacDonald, not after. Uh, Dennis Miller was uh, Weekend Update anchor in the 80s. Yeah, Dennis Miller would be probably my second favorite Weekend Update anchor ever with Norm being number one. Um, Can't believe I'm blanking on the guy's name because I can totally picture him. Anyway, so that's why Norm MacDonald was removed, supposedly, from the Weekend Update desk. Don Olmeyer at NBC told Lauren Michaels, I don't think he's funny. I don't understand why you think he's funny or why anyone else thinks he's funny. Now, the, the the conspiracy part of it, which makes a lot of sense, is those of you who are old enough to remember and who watched the show at that time might recall that Norm MacDonald um, did a lot of OJ jokes because the OJ trial was going on, and uh, Norm would do some, some pretty— pretty rough jokes about OJ and um, Don Olmeyer happened to be very good friends. Yes. Gonzo got it. Yes. Colin Quinn. Thank you, Gonzo. Colin Quinn replaced. uh, If I have my timeline, correct. Colin Quinn was definitely after Norm McDonald. I don't think there was anybody in between. I believe Colin replaced Norm, but Don Olmeyer was good friends with OJ so the, the theory is the real reason that Don Olmeyer went to Lauren Michaels and said, get him out of there, is because he was personally offended by all the OJ jokes. And you can go on YouTube. Don't do it right now, please. Do it later after the show. But you can go on YouTube. I know because I've done it. <laughs> you can go on YouTube and just type in Norm McDonald OJ Weekend Update and find entire compilations of not, of just, you know, all the uh, OJ jokes that Norm Macdonald did on SNL. Oh, Melanie uh, Melanie La Liberty in the chat room says, recently found the OJ jokes. They were hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, geez, not only, th- not only uh, there, but Norm, there's, uh, and again, it's on YouTube. You can find it easily. Norm one year was hired to host the, what, what is it? Some, I'm not a sports guy. Some sort of ESPN awards or something, like the ESPYs, I think they call them. Some sort of sports thing. And Norm was hired to host the show, and he comes out and does his opening monologue and, uh, and, does, and, and, and puts in an OJ joke. And this was like after the OJ trial and everything, but it was an OJ joke that he had somehow found a way to relate to a current player and it was just like, uh, you know, something about I hope uh, so-and-so, whoever the player he was talking about, doesn't end up murdering his ex-wife and a waiter or something. And, and the, it like, gasps. Not not laughs. I mean, there were some laughs. But when, he's, when he delivers the joke, and you can find it on YouTube, when he delivers the joke, there's like, you can hear the gasping in the crowd. Like, whoa. Like, they were not expecting 
quite that. But that was Norm. That was Norm. He would say really shocking things with that very dry delivery. And that was uh, part of the genius of, of Norm MacDonald. Um, and his, uh, you know, another thing you can look on YouTube if you've never seen it is uh, he was on the very last uh, uh, show that uh, David Letterman did, uh, The Late Show with David Letterman. Um, Norm MacDonald was on, on the finale, or at least he was on that final week. I think he was on the very last show, and he actually, you know, he tells Dave how much he loves him, and he actually, it's the one time you ever see Norm MacDonald getting emotional, and he and he actually tears up. It's it's uh, it's quite a moment. We have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, Matt. Ronnie. Hey, Ron. How are you? Very good, thank you. And did I hear you have um, Gonzo and um, Baronet on your show today? No, they're both in the Facebook live chat. Oh, okay. Well, hello via Facebook. Yes. But, um, back to Norman. You know what I used to get a kick out of? He used to always give Alex Trebek show uh, <laughs> a hard time. And, you know, he'd yes. be wearing that Burt Reynolds hat. Yes. But he had that one skit where he did uh, the, the penis is mightier or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I Yeah, I, I sort of remember that. But I vividly remember, yes, uh, uh, he was, um, that was a recurring thing. That was actually one of the few sketches he was in because you wouldn't see him in a lot of sketches. Usually you would only see him on Weekend Update because that was his thing. But he would occasionally show up in a sketch. And when they would do Jeopardy with uh, Will Ferrell as Alex Trebek and Norm MacDonald yes. would, would play Burt Reynolds. And it was extremely funny. Yeah, it was a good show. He was, yeah. he just was Tearing apart uh, Alex Trebek or, or Will Ferrell, you know. Yeah, yeah. Per yep. Done match perfectly the two of them. Oh yeah. And they both kept character perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Veronette in the chat says yes, he did the best Burt Reynolds impersonation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah very yeah. good. Hey, you didn't uh, you didn't happen to catch um, Peter's show? I know you're doing your own, but you catch Peter's show today towards the end. I did not. I usually do hear uh, the last part of it because I have it on in the uh, studio here while I'm getting ready for my show. But for whatever, you know, I was, oh, well, I was looking for Norm audio to play, uh, so I, I wasn't paying attention to Peter's show. Why? What happened? It was just, it was like unbelievable. I guess we'll, 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 hear, we'll hear more about it tomorrow, but some girl called in, 26, year, 26 years old, Yeah, knows the moose, and... <laughs> She's in town with her and her friend, and I guess they're date, they've dated. She likes all the guys. Mm. It was a it was a hot show. I mean, it was like holy cow! It was like we shouldn't be calling him Moose. We should be calling him Sly Fox. It was unbelievable. Oh, very nice. Sounds like love is in the air for the Moose. Yeah, the secrets he doesn't tell us, you know. So tomorrow we're going to be digging it up. Well, he's see a big. What we can find out. He's... Peter was like, "Geez, I wish he wasn't working. I'd call him right away." He's but, a big, uh, uh, big celebrity. You, know, you had to hear the show to get the gist of it. Very interesting. I will check that out. Hmm. There you go. It's towards the end of the show. The oh. last half hour, you'll catch it all. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. All right, Ron. Thank you so much for the call, my friend. Take care. You bet. Bye bye. Bye bye. Always nice to hear from Ron. Yeah, I will have to uh, have to listen to that. Of course, the morning show weekdays from 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, with a replay from 2 to 4 p.m. right before this program hosted by, of course, uh, the great Peter White. And yeah, the moose was on. Was it? Yes. Actually, it was yesterday, right? Was it yesterday the moose was on? Um, so uh, Joel the Moose Elber, of course, for those who don't know. Uh, well, that opens up a line for you, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476, tweet me at Matt Connerton, or send an email uh, to matt at mattconnerton.com. Um, and, of course, you can always interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is give us a call at 603-250-6007. By the way, it is uh, Tuesday, of course. So coming up in the second hour, Numero Dos of Matt Connerton Unleashed will be joined in studio by Mike Sutterth for his weekly Tweakonomics segment. Um, let's see. I want to... Uh, we will get to some other stuff, but just um, just to kind of put a button on the uh, Norm McDonald. I mean, I'm absolutely open about 
I'm certainly open to talking about them more if, if anyone wants to, if anyone calls in. Uh, but um, this is what Variety.com put up. And again, the, the news broke uh, just uh, just within the last couple of hours. Uh, Norm MacDonald, comedian and Saturday Night Live star, dies at 61. Uh, it says, Norm MacDonald, the deadpan comedian, actor, writer, and Saturday Night Live star, has died after a battle with cancer, Variety has confirmed. McDonald's privately battled the disease for almost a decade. That's remarkable that he was able to keep it that quiet for that long. Um, quote, Norm was an original. He defined American humor with honesty and blunt force. Unquote. Jeff Danis, president of DPN Talent and one of McDonald's reps, told Variety in a statement. Dozens of comedians, including Seth Rogen, John Stewart, uh, and Jim Gaffigan, paid tribute to McDonald. Um, calling him one of the greatest comedians to have ever lived. Uh, I agree. Uh, the comedian got his start in, sh- I forgot about this part of his career. He got his start in showbiz as a writer on Roseanne in 1992 after making rounds at comedy clubs in Canada. He joined the cast of Saturday Night Live in 1993 and the next year began his memorable stint as Weekend Update anchor until early 1998. Wow, so he actually was the SNL anchor for the better part of the 90s, um, up until 1998 when he was replaced by Colin Quinn. McDonald was known for his dry humor, non sequiturs, and impressions of Burt Reynolds, David Letterman, Larry King, Quentin Tarantino, and many more during his five-year run on the show. By the way, yes, his, uh, his Larry King impression was pretty memorable as well. Uh, McDonald anchored Weekend Update during the O.J. Simpson trial, where he delivered one of his most memorable jokes at the top of the episode following Simpson's acquittal. And this was the joke. And I don't do a Norm MacDonald impression, so I'm just going to read it straight. But, well, it is finally official. Murder is legal in the state of California. Um, After his removal from Weekend Update, McDonald accused NBC executive Don Olmeyer of firing him over his controversial Simpson jokes though Olmeyer cited poor ratings. Yeah, so Olmeyer is never, uh, is you know, at least not publicly acknowledged that that was the real reason. But the theory is because Olmeyer was tight with OJ, he didn't, uh, he didn't like it. Um, after exiting SNL, McDonald created The Norm Show with Bruce Helford on ABC, which ran from 1999 until 2001. Uh, he didn't enjoy that, by the way. I mean, he, he talked about it a lot in interviews. He really did not enjoy doing a sitcom. Uh, the comedian starred as Norm Henderson, a hockey player who is banned for life from the NFL because of gambling and tax evasion. So he must perform five years of community service as a social worker. The cast included Lori Metcalf, Ian Gomez, Max Wright, Artie Lang, and Faith Ford. In the 90s, McDonald appeared in films like Billy Madison, The People vs. Larry Flint, and Eddie Murphy's Dr. Doolittle as the voice of Lucky the Dog. In 1998, he starred in the film Dirty Work, directed by Bob Saget, based on the uh, based on the short story about two friends who raise money to pay for heart surgery for one of their fathers by starting a revenge for hire business. The cast included uh, uh, Lang, Artie Lang, Chris Farley, Jack Warden, Trevor Howard, I'm sorry, Trailer Howard, Chevy Chase, and Christopher McDonald, No relation. At least I assume it's spelled differently. And featured cameos by Don Rickles, Adam Sandler, John Goodman, and more. Um, That's uh, pretty much, uh, that's it. I mean, there's so much more we could say about him, but there you go. So uh, a very sad day. We'll move on to some other things. Like I said, if anyone else wants to say anything about Norm MacDonald, I'm certainly open to it at 603-250-6007. But um, I do want to... uh, Get to everybody in the Facebook live chat here. Uh, Wayne Noel, first one in on Facebook, a top fan all the way from Michigan, says afternoon all. Uh, Jenny is in the chat room and says shalom peeps. Veronette March, I mentioned, is in the chat. Rocky Huber also joins us. Veronette says RIP Norm. Uh, Jenny says rest in peace. Uh, Stacey Lawton is in the chat, says good afternoon, Matt and everyone. Many blessings to you all. Tom Blanchard says dry humor, I love it right up there with Bob Newhart. Oh, yes, me too. I I love dry humor, and I also 
I was a big uh, Newhart fan. I never saw much of the original, the Bob Newhart show, the one that aired in the 70s, but the one that was on uh, in the 80s on CBS, the one that was set in Vermont, that was simply called Newhart. Ah, uh, loved it, loved it. Monday nights on CBS. Um, yeah, my whole family would watch it. Um, let's see. Eric Street joins us in the chat. Eric's a top fan. Hello, Eric. I think I mentioned uh, Tony Petrello is in there. Gonzo is in there. Uh, Melanie La, La Liberty uh, also in there. Veronette says, hi, Ron. Um, Veronette says, debating on my Halloween costumes this year. Might dress up as Crazy Joe. Oh, my goodness. Speaking of Crazy Joe, by the way, uh, Crazy Joe... Uh, put up a video on YouTube where apparently he's planning a surprise call. I'm never going to see it coming. He's going to make a surprise call to my show. So, but it's not really a surprise because he announced it in the video. So I guess that's an example of what they mean when they say, expect the unexpected. Um... Eric uh, Pilcher is in the Facebook live chat. Hello, Eric. <laughs> Eric says, RIP Turd Ferguson. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Oh, we have a call. We'll grab this, and then we will uh, move on to some issues. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Matt Connerton Unleashed. It's Chris James. How are you? Chris James. How are you, my friend? It is a, uh, a very sad day for in the world of comedy. It is an incredibly sad day, Matt. If I if I may say so myself, uh, Norm Macdonald is. I'm I'm a stand up comedian, as you know. I, yes. I do stand up comedy in Canada here, and Norm Macdonald is, uh, in my opinion, the greatest stand up comedian, the funniest person who ever lived, and a, and a true hero of mine. It really is sad news, and and uh, yeah, tough to deal with. It's one of those guys. There's certain people on this earth that they just feel like they're never going to die. You feel like they're always going to be there, and mm -hmm. he's one of them for me. So it's really really tough. Um, for sure. But I did want to call in as well because we're doing the season finale and I haven't talked to you in so long. And my channel has become kind of nasty with a bunch of real angry freaks all the time. And we don't have the green hosts anymore. Huh. And I just wanted to check in with our old friend, Matt, who everybody did love a lot and, and see how you're doing, my friend. Well, uh, aside from being very sad about Norm Macdonald, I'm, I'm doing OK. I'm good. I'm good. Um, any any message because this is this is just a what's known as a green host check in. We're gonna try to check in with our friend Tom Golly, our friend Patrick Netherton as well. Uh, but any message for our friends out in NEAS land? Uh, I love you all. Uh, I want to uh, spread good cheer and warmth. And please get vaccinated if you haven't already. Although uh, oh, I, ass that's, I assume that's, that's wonderful. I, I no, I I appreciate that. That's a, such a good message and uh, from the heart, and I appreciate it. And, and I appreciate you. I'm um, watching the show now. Um, you know, uh, it's it's a nice tribute to. I can tell that you really had a lot of love for for Norm as well. And so, yeah, a real sad day, but thank you for that, Matt. I hope things are well, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, Chris. Thank you for the call, my friend. Appreciate it. Okay, bye. All right, bye bye. Oh, that was very nice. Our friend Chris James from Canada. And, you know, it's funny. It never occurred to me. It never occurred to me until just now that, um, but, it, but it's obvious, you know, like in music, of course, you know, you might listen to a band and you're, or a particular artist and you might say, oh, yeah, I can kind of see some of the influences. It never occurred to me the influence of, of Norm MacDonald on Chris James, but it's evident in how uh, Chris speaks, I don't think it's just that Chris is Canadian. I think he, I think there's some Norm Macdonald influence there. I have seen it's on YouTube and it's really good. And I'm, 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 I'm not just saying this out of friendship. I sincerely mean it. There's, um, there's about a ten, a ten minute clip that I found once on YouTube of Chris uh, doing stand up comedy at a, a pretty, what looks to be a pretty big venue. Uh, and uh, I, I forget where it is exactly. I assume it was in Canada. But um, and it's it's really good. Chris's stand up is very funny. So, you know, I know a lot of my listeners know him from not even a show, which is great. Um, and then there's also the, the bonus stuff, which, which you can get from his uh, Patreon, which I subscribe to. I mean, it's only five bucks a month and the content is, is wonderful. So I support what he does. But uh, on YouTube, there's a, a 
like I said, I think it's about 10 minutes of, of Chris doing stand-up comedy, and he's really good. And I think tonight, I'm going to go back on YouTube and find that again and watch it because, you know, with kind of Norm MacDonald in mind, because as I reflect back on it, I'm realizing how much of an influence that uh, Norm MacDonald uh, probably is, truly is. Well, I mean, I know he is because Chris said it himself, how much of an influence that he has been on Chris James. So so that's really cool, and it was wonderful to hear from Chris. Um, so there you go. But check out Not Even a Show. It's on YouTube. Subscribe to the uh, channel. Um, or just uh, if you look for just NEAS. And, um, and we've met a lot of really interesting people uh, through Chris, and uh, it's, been really, it's been really cool. We've known him for, it's been over two years now. So very good. Um, so thank you, Chris. Uh, but that does open up a line for you, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Um, yeah, they're still talking about him in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Dirk Don from Arrogant Media, another one of our, our close friends, says Norm was such a master of deadpan. Absolutely. Uh, Heidi Hamer, the Honorable Heidi Hamer, says, yes, I agree. Sad afternoon, Matt, R.I.P., Norm McDonald. And uh, Tom Blanchard says, you big fat so LOL. That's actually a reference to something Crazy Joe uh, says about me. Uh, our friend Crazy Joe, who also considers himself a comedian. And uh, if you see any of Crazy Joe's videos, uh, unlike Norm McDonald, uh, Crazy Joe is what we would call, I'm looking for the right phrase, uh, not funny. That's that's what I was looking for. Not funny. Uh, but uh, one of Crazy Joe's things is uh, he likes to call me Ratso Fatso Matt Covington or Comington or however he chooses to pronounce my name on any given day. But he's very into, uh, he loves to call me fat. I'd be curious to know, by the way, uh, first of all, it, it does hurt my feelings, all of the fat shaming. How dare you, Crazy Joe? I mean, if you know anything about me, you know I'm a deeply sensitive man. But... Uh, not when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> In my personal life, I am. With this stuff, I'm really not. But I'd be curious to know what Crazy Joe's idea of overweight is. You know, as I sit here in my 175 to 180 pound frame, you know, I'd be curious to know, like, what, what does he think is overweight? I think I'm rather svelte. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Listen here, Matzo Matzo. This is Crazy Joe calling. Oh, is it crazy, Joe? You sound a little. Uh, you sound a little different today. Uh, what's uh? Man, don't you worry about that. Oh. I have some things to get off of my chest right now. Well, okay. You well... and that dirtbag Charles Richardson. I must say some things, okay? All right, crazy. First of all, Just... big ratings. Joe is in the house. <laughs> Your ratings going through the roof right now. <laughs> well, that is undeniable. Uh, yes, I'll give you that one. Uh, crazy. Through the roof, I'm telling you, I'm a badass from New York. That's yes, you are. Yes, you are. But you know, you know something, Matt. I have some things I gotta say. You know, I've been rude to some women, and yeah. and <laughs> I I I've been talking with someone, and they said I should apologize for this. Well, you have said some really terrible uh, misogynistic well, things. Well, I I got this thing going on with me. This this. This thing called erectile dysfunctional, maybe you heard of it? Well, My therapist says I lash out at women because of it. Well, that, that would make sense. Now, I don't have any personal experience with that, Crazy Joe, but I have seen some commercials on cable television about it, and I, I think there's a, uh, a blue pill or a pink pill or something you can take for that. But... I've tried that before, sure. Matt. And uh -huh. I, listen here, Ratso Fatso. Yes. I'm going to tell you I, something. I'm quite... I've tried that, and I bought it. You, I bought it from one of those Indians on, on the corner of New, in my neighborhood. Let's be careful. Yes, okay. And and I took one pill. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. So I took a second pill. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. I took a third pill. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, they all worked at once. Well, wow. sounds like you had quite an afternoon. Yeah, and you know what? It's all the women's fault. 
I'm amazed that a 74-year-old man such as yourself can even, uh, but that's, uh, you know, that's not for me to uh, even really wonder about, I suppose. 64, hey, I've been nothing but nice to you. Well, in that, that dirtbag, Charles Richardson. <laughs> in that arrogant media cocksucker. Oh, can't say that. Can't say that, uh, Crazy Joe. I did the dump button on that. We're on FM, my friend. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, it's... I, I'm sorry. F whoever, I'm sorry. But I tell you, that Dirk, that uh -huh. Dirk, that vaping idiot, uh -huh. he's going to get his. Right. There, and there's some pretty ridiculous pictures of Crazy Joe floating around that I'm not a fan of. There's this one that looks like I have milk uh, on my face. Right, yes. We're all familiar with that one. You don't need to explain it uh, in any more uh, detail. But, hey, uh, you, nothing wrong with enjoying a delicious uh, glass of milk. It shows your uh, uh, secure. I, I know what you're getting at there. Mm -hmm. You and your people. You, uh, my show, my show is going to blow up. You blow up. It's going to be like your buddy Norm McDonald's weekend update. Wow. Well, you know, he was uh, removed from that, though, at, at one point because people... Well, see, you and your people trying to get me mm. removed from everything. Uh-huh. Uh, no. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, but Crazy Joe, yeah. but you insist on blocking everyone from your Facebook page. I'm trying, but they keep coming back. That I is don't true. get it. That I is block true. them and they come back. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I, I don't know why that is. Uh, you must uh, need to adjust your settings. I'm not sure what's happening there. I, yeah, mm. yeah. And, and, you know, I think the women need to understand that my issues that I have, it's all their fault. Uh -huh. Just like my issues in trying to get my show started, the Crazy Joe show, it, you, it's your fault, Matt. Your fault. I think that something we have learned, Crazy Joe, from watching all of your videos is that all of your problems are, in fact, someone else's fault. <laughs> Matt, I can't do this anymore. This is Eric from Cedar oh. Rapids. <laughs> well, Eric, it was uh, it, it, you. You kept it up for longer than uh, than anyone could have. <laughs> but you did great. You did great. <laughs> How are you, Eric? <laughs> I, I I I had to. I had to. Yes. Sorry, everyone. No, don't Might apologize. Might have taken it a touch over the top there. That's okay. I, I did have to hit the dump button on one thing because we're on FM, but it'll still be in the podcast. So oh, okay. <laughs> so that's fine. I, I'm sorry, Matt. That's, My apologies, no, that's on okay. Matt. But no, that, no right. I I I I keep watching his videos because it's like a train wreck. You want to look away, but you really can't. Yeah, of course, of course. Absolutely. I uh, No, one of life's great joys is getting a notification that there's a new Crazy Joe video. As repetitive as they are, and they are repetitive, but he did announce in his most recent video that I can expect a surprise call from him. I, I'm, I'm hoping that he heard my impersonation and that jump starts him calling in. Yeah. Well, we'll see. The I mean, Before I go, I wanted to chime in on a Norm McDonald memory. Oh, yeah. Uh, he might not have been a fan of the Norm show, but there was an episode he did with Abe Vigoda. And it was just absolutely hilarious. And him, Lori Metcalf, and I believe Artie Lang with Abe Vigoda mocked a scene in The Godfather as a part of the ending credits. Oh, no kidding. And. I thought it was funny when I saw it. I was uh, in middle school at the time and hadn't even seen The Godfather. Then when I saw The Godfather, I got it yeah. and thought it was even more hilarious. He truly was an underrated visionary yeah. and just deadpan delivery. And the ESPYs are a joke, but with Norm MacDonald as a host, yeah. they meant something. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, so you remember that. You've seen the clip where he tells that OJ joke and the crowd is kind of like they don't know how to quite how to deal with it when he tells that joke in his monologue. You know, and here's. It's a great moment. Look, <laughs> it is. It is a great joke. And the problem is, is that people. He did it at a time where people still had OJ on this pedestal. 
people don't realize OJ didn't fall from that pedestal until he wrote that book that said, if I did it, Confessions of the Killer. Oh, yeah. Conf- yeah. That's when the fall from grace started. People still held him in high regard until that happened. And then Ron Goldman came out and said, I still haven't seen one cent from the settlement. And that's when things went really haywire for him. So it was a funny joke. And nowadays, NFL players are in so much trouble that you can just draw one out of a hat and you can make a joke about them. But back then, it was it was taboo, but I didn't see a problem with it. No. Well, I think I mean, I think when he fell off the pedestal depends on you know, your, your point of view. I mean, I think for a lot of people, he fell off the pedestal when they turned on the news and saw the uh, white Bronco being chased by police and uh, OJ was fleeing the, the, the scene of uh, what, what was to be his arrest. Um, so, you know, it all depends. But you're right. I mean, a lot of people in the sports world at that time, uh, from what I recall, uh, you're right, Eric, they did still hold him in, in some high regard or or at the very least, they were still willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because he had such a storied career in football, I guess. I'm not a sports guy, so I only know what sports fans tell right. me. Right. No, but, uh, I understand that, and I, I am a sports guy. And I can say that, you know, a majority of sports fans, their thing was he was found not guilty, he's not guilty, move on. Right. And there was no – discriminating eye there was no questioning it and if you did question it you you weren't labeled a racist but you were looked at as oh it's because oj is black and it was it was kind of the beginning of sports turning woke in a way it Hmm. drew it out many many more years but it was the beginning of that it's interesting and I, i hadn't thought of i hadn't thought about that Well, there's a documentary, and if anyone's interested, you can go on ESPN Plus called OJ Made in America. It is a four-part series, and I know it seems long, but it it isn't just about sports. It's about culture. It's about race. It's about – they talk about how the the defense played the jury Um, because Johnny Cochran said, we have to make OJ black. And because he said it, he said it so many times throughout his career. I'm not black. I'm OJ. Yeah, yeah. And it, so that series really shines a whole new light on the whole OJ thing, huh. and what what it did, and yeah. what and how it really kind of started this slow trickle to wokeism in sports, especially pro sports well i do remember how big of a role race ended up playing in the trial largely because of mark Furman, uh that detective who um and i don't i don't remember you know i wasn't one of the people who was super i was kind of i mean i paid attention but i wasn't super invested in it like like some people you know to them it was you know a soap opera they would uh they would watch watch the trial every day because it was on television Well, because soap operas weren't on the trial was right right (laughs) yeah exactly Um, you know, so I remember some of the other uh, people. I remember Mark Furman. I remember Judge Lance Ito. I remember Marsha Clark. Um, you know, and some of these people ended up with media careers post trial and directly benefited from all the media attention that they got. Oh, yeah. But, um, but I do remember. Yeah. I mean, the Kardashians, prime example, their dad wasn't even really a key member of it. He just kind of stood behind and look at, they took off because of that. That I even know. Robert Kardashian yeah. was OJ's best friend. Oh, the, Eric, honestly, and I feel I feel foolish uh, saying this, but it, it that didn't even click in my mind right away that that's the, the the same. But of course, how common a name could Kardashian be? Probably not very. Th- th- I, right. Robert th- Kardashian. Th- that didn't click. OJ when he th- threatened to commit suicide. Yeah, threatened to do it in Khloe Kardashian's bedroom. I totally forgot that it's the same Kardashians because I remember Robert Kardashian. I, I I'd never made that connection though, as obvious a connection as it is. But I've never, I mean, you know, I've never cared about the Kardashians. No, but, and, and, and I mean, and not trying to dog you, but not being a sports guy, you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I know. 
But no, it, yeah, he. That's where the Kardashian fame came from. Mm. It wasn't from Chris marrying Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn Jenner. Now I'll be damned. Um, it was I didn't realize through Robert Kardashian. Ah. In his friendship with OJ and being on TV and kind of being the press person for OJ throughout that entire trial. I'll be damned. Yeah. See, I'd forgotten about him. I'd totally forgotten um, about him. Hm. Yeah. There's just so much that went into that. Like they, the defense team went into OJ's house before they let the jury into the home. Yeah. And put up, instead of pictures of him with like white mayors and stuff. They put up pictures of him hugging African Americans to try to make him more a part of the African American community. Huh. Interesting. They, yeah. I didn't know they, about that. Yeah, they took down pictures painted by white artists and put up look like African uh African American Nubian art and street art in his home. So that that's in that documentary you were talking about? Yes. Okay. And it's also in the show American Crime Story that aired on FX, which is a great dramatization of everything that went down. Because I do remember um, I do remember that uh, part of the defense is uh, and like I said, I only remember bits and pieces. But um, but I remember part of the defense's argument w about Mark Furman was that he was trying to set up O.J. because he was black. And they were trying to prove that Mark Furman was racist. And uh, and I, I seem to recall some evidence to suggest that Mark Furman uh, maybe did uh, have some of that in him. But but I always thought the idea that he th he was going out of his way to frame O.J. Simpson was pretty flimsy, <laughs> you know. Well, the tape that they played was originally recorded because Mark Furman was a creative consultant for mm. a TV series or a movie. He said this stuff to a movie producer. That's right. That's right. I remember that now. Yeah. He, I mean, so whether, look, there are just things you cannot say as a human being. And I said that last time I was on your show. Mm -hmm. And the things Mark Furman said are up there. And even if his story is true, where he says, oh, I was just playing it up for dramatic effect for this person, that's still shameful language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, and of you can't say it. Right, right. Of course. And and really, the fact that they still allowed him to take the stand, even after that came out, was probably the second biggest misstep of the prosecution's uh, of the prosecution strategy. Mm -hmm. I just remember being shocked that he was acquitted. And again, I like I said, I wasn't invested in it in the sense that I wasn't watching it that closely. But um, but my impression was there was a hell of a lot of evidence <laughs> that he clearly committed those murders. And I, I, I remember just I being know stunned. We talked about it in middle school each day in current events. Yeah. And I said it then. I said, I the minute the glove didn't fit, I'm like, it's over. I mean, as much as your seventh grade mind can say yeah. in legalese, it's over. Yeah, it was just like there's no – anyone could see that, that it, once that glove didn't fit, yeah, that it, it was over. It didn't and fit. And then you couple so that with Furman, yeah. and then Cato Kalin, when Cato couldn't remember times all of, all of a sudden on oh, the stand. Yeah. Whatever happened to him? Kato Kalen. He oh. hosted. He hosts a late night show on the CW now. He was a TV judge. Huh. Like not officially a judge, but kind of like a judge show. I think Judge Kato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I really wouldn't trust his judgment on anything, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he. But yeah, so the, yeah, the whole OJ thing, it really. Now everyone makes OJ jokes. So Norm McDonald was probably. <laughs> could say he was a visionary in that. Oh, yeah. And he's like, nah, I'm going to make fun of this. He was, and he did. He was fearless about it. I mean, he was really fearless. Um, he, and, yeah. Him, him and it, the whole thing with NBC was OJ had done football games on NBC Sports. Oh, for many right. years. Right. So that's probably so that's how he and Don Olmeyer 
probably that's how they got to know each other. And Saturday Night Live to air um, without with minimal evasiveness during college football season, the M- NBC, uh, Lauren Michaels needed the cooperation of Dick Ebersol of yes. NBC Sports. So that's another one that uh, was probably not happy with Norm's jokes. So that would explain it. So because Lauren Michaels needed that cooperation from Dick Ebersol, that may, that all makes I, sense. I, would, I have never read anything to confirm that, but I know yeah. Dick Ebersol was very close with OJ. Yeah, it makes sense. And so it would lead me to believe that there was probably some cooperation there. It makes sense because I remember at the time people were like, uh, you know, and I, I would read in industry magazines like uh, Entertainment Weekly or whatever. And, uh, you know, I don't know how much I actually learned from those. But I just remember at the time people were saying, why is Lauren Michaels just rolling over and giving Norm the boot? You know, would he normally you, you would think he would fight for his uh, for a member of his cast. Plus, it was unusual for somebody, anyone at NBC Brass to directly interfere with Saturday Night Live on that level to the point where they were telling someone, telling Lauren Michaels, you have to remove someone from Weekend Update. The whole thing was so bizarre. But what you just laid out, Eric, makes perfect sense. I think you're right. Yeah, and so there's a lot at play there. And NBC is a political monster to begin with. Um, like, so yeah, it, it, it oftentimes NBC Sports clashes with Saturday Night Live, especially during football season, uh, because they have the exclusive rights to Notre Dame home games. Yeah, well, and Notre yeah. Dame home games sometimes they are in prime time, and don't start until eight o'clock. Well, do you remember so too? It, they can kind of preempt Saturday Night Live, and it there's always been a butting heads between Lauren Michaels and Dick Ebersol. Well, I was going to say, do you remember Eric when the XFL was on NBC and they had those oh, yes. Saturday Night games? And I think it might have been. The debut of the XFL, they had a game that ran really late and cut into Saturday Night Live, and and supposedly, uh, Lauren Michaels was furious with the uh, sports the division. The blew. What? They, they they blew they blew the power truck. Oh, I don't know about that. At the game. Oh. Yeah, the the game that was aired was week two. Okay. And it, the power truck blew, and they didn't have a backup generator. Oh, so that delayed the game? Yeah. Oh. Because there was no power to the stadium or anything. Oh, okay. They blew a transformer. Okay. So it's dominoes. It, so that happens. That delays the game, and which then delays Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And, you know, uh, again, I hate to promote something else. The, the 30 for 30 about the XFL goes into great detail about that particular game. I need to and see the conversations that. between Lauren Michaels and Dick Ebersol. Mm. Well, I'd like to have been a fly uh, on that, the wall. Oh, I can, I can only imagine. During that time. Yeah. I'd um, like... Usually I side on the sports side of it, but I side with Lauren Michaels on that. It isn't their fault that right. you didn't prepare. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like, I've, re- I've been a part of live per- sports productions. How do you not have a generator on hand? Yeah. That is uh, surprising. You'd think they'd be prepared for any contingency. W- with what was at yeah, stake. Yeah, so, no, there's a ton. Uh, there's tons of stories out there about NBC Sports and the issues with SNL. Yeah. Uh, they, I think they covered it, a lot of it, in the book Live from New York, which is an oral history of Saturday Night Live. Oh, okay. There is a book. That must be a more... Is that a more recent? There was a book when I was a kid that had come out about Saturday Night Live. There was this a, is a like best way to put it is a tome. It, okay. It's over a thousand pages. Okay, it came out I want to say eight to ten years ago. Okay, that's not the one I read it, then. Okay, I read an older one. This one goes into details about everything from the initial airings up till present day when oh. the book came out. 
it's very, very interesting to read the backstage issues and everything like that. Yeah, I might have to check that out because I love that kind of stuff. I uh... Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's called Live from New York. Okay. Huh. It is an amazing book, and the writers of it really did a great job. And I, I'm a big fan of SNL. I learned yeah. a bunch of new things. Yeah. <laughs> I've been a fan off and on over the years. I, I, uh, like, I, I come and go with it. I didn't know that Bill Murray and Chevy Chase, how much they hated each other, even during yeah. the filming of Caddyshack. <laughs> I know a little bit about that just from hearing Howard Stern interview uh, Bill Murray. Actually, I think he interviewed both Bill Murray and Chevy Chase separately and asked them both about that because Howard will ask, you know, anything. He doesn't, right. he doesn't care if it's Chevy uncomfortable. Chevy Chase is his own biggest fan. Right. <laughs> but I think I've taken up enough of your time today, Matt. Well, Eric, it's, um, it's always. I'm going to go back to my listening role, and well, always a hopefully pleasure. Hopefully, we get a visit from a crazy New Yorker. It very well could happen. Always a pleasure, but we did enjoy uh, your impression of him very much. That was uh, of all the people who've done impressions of him on the show, yours, I think, came the closest to sounding like him. I, I was a little bit. I actually messaged Dirk before I did it. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah, I'm like I don't want to make Matt mad. <laughs> oh no! Why would you? Why would that? And he, no. and he he's and basically Dirk's cool. He is. He's a he's oh, a yeah. great guy. Everyone yeah. should love Dirk. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I love. Yeah, Dirk. everyone I, should. Yeah, absolutely. We love Dirk. He does a, a weekly segment on the show. He does this. I don't even know what he has he, planned for tomorrow's he, uh, segment. He does. I listened to it last week, and I, he made the ins the insane clown posse interesting. I was shocked. Yeah, yeah, he's about the only one who could. <laughs> I, you know, I I used to hate them guys. I used to bash on them pretty badly, but you know what? They wore face paint. They created a cult like following, and they made millions off of it. If that isn't the American dream, I don't know what is. Oh sure. Sure. I never hated them. I was always kind of indifferent uh, toward them, but I never uh, never hated them per se. I, I hate's a strong word. I just, yeah. disdain would probably be a better word. <laughs> well, disdain is a, a lot like hate, but uh, that's okay. Anyway, Eric, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for the call, my friend. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, always a pleasure, Matt. Thank you. All right. You got it. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. That was our friend Eric Pilcher. And uh, we met uh, Eric through Dirk, and Dirk does do uh, a weekly segment on the show. I'm not sure uh, what Dirk has planned for this week. Maybe he'll tell us in the Facebook live chat. Uh, but every Wednesday at uh, midpoint in the show, we play Dirk's newest album review, and we always really enjoy that. He does a great job. Also, I recommend subscribing to Dirk's uh, YouTube channel, Arrogant Media. Uh, they do a lot of great content. And Dirk is one of the people that we met because of Crazy Joe. So Crazy Joe's good for something. We've met some wonderful people uh, because of him. Uh, Dirk, uh, Eric, uh, Billy Painter, or Bad Billy as he likes to be called, and, and some other folks. Uh, so anyway, we are at the top of the hour. Let's take a break. I'm going to play a song or two. Uh, we'll show some love to our sponsors so we can pay the bills. And then when we come back, uh, usually gets here around five, so uh, we'll do our weekly Tweakonomics segment with uh, with our friend Mike Sutterth. So uh, let's hear a little. I'd play another uh, Norm clip like I did at the top of the show, but I don't have any others ready, and I have to hear them first to make sure there's no bad words. But I'm sure I'll play some more of uh, Norm McDonald tomorrow. As uh, If you're just joining us, and if you haven't heard the news already, uh, comedian Norm McDonald passed away. I was announced today at age 61 after a decade-long battle with cancer. So, very sad day. But uh, let's take a break, and then we'll be back with hour number two, a numero dos of Matt Connerton Unleashed. Coming up, don't go away.
Welcome back, everybody. We are into our number two numero dos of Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also uh, on Comcast 97, if you're in Manchester, streaming uh, on WMNHradio.org and on the Facebook, on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And you can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc. Hello to our friends at Raw Talk Online and Tomorrow Radio. Today is Tuesday, September 14, 2021. Welcome one and all. I do want to remind you, of course, that we are proudly sponsored by the Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan at 1000 Elm Street. Don't go there today because Monday and Tuesday is their weekend. But you can go there tomorrow. You can go there Wednesday through Sunday. They have delicious gourmet pretzels. They have craft beer. They have wine. They have, uh, they have board games. They have uh, Grant Lampton, who performs live there every Friday night. Uh, Grant's alter ego, Mike Sutterth, by the way, is on his way. He will be joining us uh, probably the last half hour. He's, uh, uh, he's been detained, not, not by, uh, you know, uh, the uh, policia or anything like that, but uh, he is on his way. But he's a busy guy. Got a lot going on. So he'll be here. Uh, of course, uh, Thursday nights, uh, they have trivia with the great Bill Sini at the Hop Knot. So great food, great service, and a wonderful family. The Hop Knot on Elm. I can see them from here, which is really cool. Now, again, there's nobody there because Monday and Tuesday is their weekend. But I can see. I can see our sponsor from here, which I like. I like that. Let's see. Um... Yeah, so Mike will be here probably last half hour, it sounds like. Uh, in the meantime, let me give the numbers, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also uh, text me at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to Matt at mattconnerton.com. And, of course, you can always interact and opine in the uh, Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to call us at 603-250-6007. And of course, if you're just joining us, if you haven't heard the news already, uh, we'll just uh, mention it briefly again. Uh, Norm MacDonald, like I was saying earlier, one of my, excuse me, one of my top five Favorite comedians of all time, uh, passing away today at age uh, 61. Uh, If you are a Norm fan, you'll definitely want to go back and check out the first hour of the show because we talked about him quite a bit. Uh, And, of course, we do archive the shows at WMNHradio.org and at MattConnerton.com. And I'm open to discussing anything you like. If you want to talk about Norm, uh, feel free to call in or we can talk about anything really uh, left to my own devices. I do have a couple of things I'd like to get to. And then uh, when Mike Sutter th- uh, gets here, we'll do our weekly Tweakonomics segment, which we uh, we always look forward to. But uh, yeah, today's, uh, like I said, very, very sad news. Uh, Norm MacDonald. One of my absolute favorites. I opened the show today with a a couple of clips from appearances that he did on Conan and they had a great rapport. Those are, those are a lot of fun to watch. Um, I might find a couple more of those for tomorrow's show. So we'll see. Um, Just uh, looking at the Facebook live chat quickly. Just want to make sure we acknowledge anyone in here that we didn't already. Um, By the way, we enjoyed uh, Eric Pilcher's uh, call there. Uh, as Crazy Joe, that was that was a really good Crazy Joe impression. I mean, I, I I knew it wasn't actual Crazy Joe. If he if he if Eric could have made his voice just a little bit raspy, I think he would have been dead on. But that was very very good. He had his his intonation down, his cadence. It was really good, really good. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, Christian Lacoste joins us in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Christian says, uh, wait, did I did I miss it? Did Joe make his surprise call in? Uh, DJ Midas is in the chat as well. DJ Midas, of course, part of the WMNH family. He is the host of Late Night Delight, which you can hear every Saturday night from 12 midnight all the way to 4 a.m. with a replay on Sunday night if you missed it. Um, I wanted to... Uh, there's a couple, couple things, 
couple things I had in mind. Well, we should talk about it. Somebody mentioned it in the chat room. Oh, Joe Friday is in the chat and says, how do you gentlemen feel about Caitlyn Jenner running for governor? We, yeah, we should talk about it because that's uh, today, uh, the uh, election in California, the special election, the recall election of Gavin Newsom. I think um, I think he's going to end up winning and keeping his governorship. But um, Caitlyn Jenner, one of the celebrities who jumped in, I don't think there's, I don't get the impression there's as many celebra- uh, celebrities this time around. Um The last time they had a recall election, when they recalled Gray Davis, what year was that? Was that 2002, maybe? When they recalled Gray Davis, the Democrat who was governor at that time, and that's how Schwarzenegger became governor. Um, But I remember there were so many celebrities who were running that uh, they actually did on Comedy Central at the time, they did a mock game show called Who Wants to Be the Governor of California? And it was just a one-episode thing. It was an hour long, but they made a game show out of it. And adult film star Mary Carey ended up uh, winning the game show. But uh, but sadly, it was non-binding. So even though she won the show, uh, she did not uh, go on to be governor of California. But I remember they had Gary Coleman was on the show. But I think Gary Coleman was actually on the ballot too, wasn't he? And Mary Carey. I think I think the people on the game show were all people who were on the actual ballot. But uh, but uh, Schwarzenegger came out on top. Um, oh, Jenny in the chat room says towards the end he sounded like uh, the My Pillow guy, referring to uh, Eric's uh, Crazy Joe impression. Stephen M. Branch, that's a new name in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Stephen says weird hearing someone else talk about Crazy Joe. It's been like five years. Well, I don't know who you are, Stephen M. Branch, but it sounds to me like you have some history with Crazy Joe. So let's be friends and compare notes because we have met a lot of wonderful people through Crazy Joe. But uh, this is the newest update. This is from Reuters. Uh, California voters deciding governor's fate in Republican red led rather recall. I created an amalgam of recall and lead and made red. Um, California voters today are deciding whether to recall uh, Governor Gavin Newsom in a special election that will test the power of a Republican Party still dominated by former U.S. President Donald Trump in a deeply Democratic state. Newsom, a first-term governor and former lieutenant governor and San Francisco mayor, is fighting for his political future in the in only the second gubernatorial recall election in state history in 55 attempts? I don't mean to be distracted by this, but Stephen M. Branch in the chat says, I have a Google Drive link you might be interested in. What's your email? Um, Matt at mattconnerton.com. And Connerton is C-O-N-N-A-R-T-O-N. Matt at mattconnerton.com. Uh, please uh, send it there, Stephen. Thank you. Eric Pilcher says, uh, Matt, both Mary Carey and Gary Coleman were on the ballot. Okay, very good. Um, mail-in voting began nearly a month ago with in-person... Oh, no, mail-in voting. Oh, no, the Democrats are trying to steal it. Oh, no. Sorry. Mail-in voting began nearly a month ago with in-person voting taking place on Tuesday and the polls closing at 8 p.m., Uh, Pacific time. The campaign to oust the Democratic governor uh, began with a conservative Republican group and gained steam during the pandemic. Conservatives, angered by Newsom's liberal policies on LGBTQ rights, immigration and crime, also became infuriated by his decision to close schools and require masks and vaccinations against COVID-19. Oh, the horror. Dirk is also very interested in that uh, Google Drive link. Um, (laughs) Quote, his policies on COVID have been disastrous. He's not fighting for freedom of choice, which is what Americans want, unquote, said Michael Connors, 54, a Republican handyman wearing a Trump hat to a polling place where he voted to recall Newsom in Carlsbad on the San Diego County coast. Carlsbad is a great name for a place, by the way. I'd like to live in a place called Matt's Bad. I think that'd be fun. 
Uh, it says here, another voter in favor of recalling the governor cited Newsom's pandemic response and its impact on small businesses. Republican hair salon owner Taylor Livesley, age 31, said, quote, I'm a small business owner and my son was out of school almost a year. I don't believe in vaccines being mandated, unquote. The removal of Newsom would likely embolden Republicans in one of the country's most liberal states and set off alarms among Democrats coming just over a year before the 2022 elections that will decide control of Congress. Recall also could mean the end of Newsom's political ambitions, widely believed to include possible runs for the U.S. Senate or the presidency. I can see that. Whether Newsom survives the recall or is replaced, the next gubernatorial election will take place in November 2022. The latest opinion polls show Newsom with strong support. Right. And this is why, you know, the polling data shows Newsom is most likely to survive this, unlike Gray Davis, who was ousted. And polling data showed leading up to that Gray Davis was likely to be ousted. But according to Reuters, the latest opinion polls showed Newsom with strong support in a survey released on Friday by the Institute of Governmental Studies at the University of California, Berkeley. 60.1% of likely voters said they favored retaining the governor and 38.5% opposed him taking office. Democrats have returned twice as many ballots as Republicans so far in a four-week early voting period, state data showed. One voter who supports Newsom says she fears a Republican victory could weaken voting rights and abortion rights or reduce the state's minimum wage of $14 an hour nearly twice the federal minimum of 725 uh i'm going to skip down a little bit so here's some more information about polling data uh actually we have a call let's grab this and i i see your uh, I'll, I'll have to check that after uh steven thank you though hi welcome to matt connors and unleashed who's this wow oh, dude i can barely hear you really yeah, How you're about very, now? very quiet and far away and distant. How about now? I don't mean to be far away and distant. Do you need? I, I, I I'm sorry. You know, I, uh, I, but I, I, I've been far away and distant lately. Well, it happens. I mean, I've I got, forgive you. I've got a lot on my mind, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Don't we all? Man? You know, I mean, uh, you know, I got a lot on my mind. Yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah. So uh, listen, I yes. uh, I don't mean to change the subject of your from your mind, but um, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm going for uh, Gene Simmons of Kiss uh, for uh, governor. Oh, California, Paul. The timing is terrible. He's leaving California and moving to Texas. He is. Yes, he sold. I don't know. Well, if, I-, I don't know if he sold the mansion yet or if he's still in the process of selling. But Gene Simmons is actually leaving California. Is he going to run for governor of uh, Texas? I don't imagine so, uh, but he could. I mean, I, I can That'd imagine him in a, in a cowboy hat. Yeah, absolutely. And they could have, he could have uh, David Lee Roth as his lieutenant governor. The problem, though, with Gene Simmons running for governor of Texas is he takes COVID very seriously. He has COVID, in mm-hmm. fact, and he's very pro-vaccine. And, you know, they don't like that in Texas. Uh, uh, Gene Simmons has COVID? Yeah, both Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley's recovered. I'm not sure if Gene is still recovering. I think he, uh, yeah, they're both. Well, wait a minute. They're vaccinated. Didn't, so. didn't he just call in the other day and say he was cruising Elm? If he's cruising <laughs> Elm, why is, uh, I mean, if he has COVID, what's he doing that for? Well, hopefully he's wearing a face mask, which he's used to. Didn't sound like it, but mm-hmm. okay, yeah. whatever. I know, right? All right, Matt, I just wanted to uh, interrupt you. <laughs> All right, Paul. Well, do you want to plug uh, Friday's show while you're here? Yeah, sure. You and I and Dan and DJ Steve will be doing uh, metal covers. All your favorite pop songs from the 70s and 80s. Uh, metal versions. That will be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Friday night on Retro yeah. Spectrum Radio. That's right. 7.30 p.m. right there where you're sitting, Matt. That's right. You'll be here. I'll be over there. Dan will be there. Mm-hmm. Steve will be there. It'll be great. Well, that that's if they show up. Yeah, you never know with those guys. Right. Yes. Right. Okay, my friend, you uh, <laughs> carry on. I'm listening. I love your show. All Take right. care. All right, Paul. Thank you. Bye-bye.
All right, that was the great Polly C of Retro Spectrum Radio with Polly C, which you can hear every Friday night right here on WMNH, beginning at 7.30. Um, Eric in the chat says, the mansion is on the market, not sold. Ah, okay. Joe Friday says, I'm voting for Blue Oyster Cult. And uh, Vicky Opine in the chat room says, dorks. I like that name, Opine, though. I like when people opine in the Facebook live chat. Um... Well, that does open up a line for you, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Reuters reports that Newsom's poll numbers have improved from earlier this summer when polls showed uh, so few Democrats were planning to vote that his job was in jeopardy in a state where Republicans make up less than a quarter of the electorate. Yeah. I mean, that right off the bat. Just imagine, though. I mean, I don't know what the makeup of the state was exactly back in the early 2000s when they recalled Gray Davis. But I do remember some of what the media was saying about Gray Davis, and I seem to recall that people were really upset with Gray Davis because in a state, assuming that the makeup uh, demographically in terms of the electorate, Assuming it was similar then to what it is now and about only a quarter of the state was Republicans, can you imagine how how horribly Gray Davis was perceived to be as governor to be recalled in a state where Democrats are so dominant? Uh, it says here, the polls changed Democrats' mindset from sitting back on the couch to saying, this is something we've got to do, said Paul Mitchell. Oh, I like his hair products, uh, whose firm political data intelligence analyzed state ballot return information. Um, Under California's recall system, voters are asked to vote yes or no on whether to recall Newsom. If more than 50 percent of voters say Newsom should be recalled, then the candidate with the most votes on the second question, even if less than a majority, automatically replaces him for the remainder of his four-year term. Republican radio host and Trump supporter Larry Elder leads the state, I'm sorry, leads the slate of 46 replacement candidates. Elder, who has high visibility from his frequent appearances, <clears throat> excuse me, on conservative Fox News, has vowed to remove requirements for vaccines and mask wearing. Seven of eight randomly selected Republican yes voters in Carlsbad and Oceanside said they had voted for Elder. Um, I'm kind of skipping down. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's there's a little bit more to it, but it really just kind of gets into more of the nuts and bolts of the uh, polling data. But, yeah, Larry Elder, who probably never expected to be in this position, you know, he's a, a conservative talk show host. Um, he is black. And, uh, you know, a black conservative talk show host is something you don't see a lot of. Um, But uh, he did say he may have already harmed himself (laughs) with the Republicans in a couple of ways. Uh, Even though he does not support vaccine mandates or forced maxing, he is not. And he has said this. He is not an anti-vaxxer. And he himself is vaccinated. He has said that. That might hurt him with some on the right. In uh, California. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh, and he did say that, you know, look, Joe Biden is the duly elected president. Larry Elder did say that at one point that he accepts the election results and Biden won the election. So I don't know, but uh, it will be interesting to see where that uh, how this turns out. But I will be very surprised. It will definitely be considered an upset if Larry Elder does manage to unseat Gavin Newsom as governor of California. But I have to tell you, uh, I find it extraordinarily unlikely. And I also think it's um, possible that we're not going to know for a little while because uh, uh, because of all the ballots they have to count, all the mail-ins. Uh, Joe Friday in the chat says, now that I think about it, I'm going to vote for Frank Richot? Richo? Who is that? I don't even know who that is. I feel like there's a joke in there that I'm not getting. Um, There was something Jenny wanted to get to on the show the other day and we never got to, but I see a story about it here. Uh, Rawstory.com is reporting because, you know, there's a couple of big anti-vaxxers on Fox News. Um, The the three people on the morning show on Fox, 
uh, Fox and Friends, they've been pretty, especially Steve Ducey, they've been pretty good about saying, look, you really should get vaccinated. They've been good on this. But then, of course, you've got the anti-vaxxers in primetime on Fox, like Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram. Laura Ingram, by the way, who should know better, she's a cancer survivor. She's immunocompromised. Uh, but um, And also uh, uh, Sean Hannity, who's been all over the place on it. But uh, according to Rossory.com, Fox News has implemented vaccination requirements, and now 90% of full-time employees are fully vaccinated, according to an internal memo at Fox. So what I am curious to know is, is Tucker Carlson actually fully vaccinated and he's been lying to everyone. And I know that would be a, a big uh, a big shock to us all. But uh, joining us at the news desk, there he is, the man of the hour, Mr. Mike Sutterth. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good afternoon. Sorry for the uh, delay, ladies and gentlemen. But apparently everybody's back to work and there is a commute involved now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I kind of noticed it earlier myself. Uh, traffic seems a little heavy today. Yeah, and I don't work in Boston or anything like that, but uh, I was a, a wee bit jammed up here, so we'll have to... Uh, do you come up Do you come up Route 3? or No, sir. I come uh, from the other side of the river up near uh, Exit 10. Oh, okay. But uh, even that, there's uh, school buses and all kinds of stuff. Oh, um, yeah. Um, but I, I've, I've got to plan that into my schedule here. I'm used to just kind of going where I want to, and uh, especially into Boston. I, I was down uh, in Boston this past weekend to pick up a friend from Logan Airport, and uh, it was the weekend, so I said, okay, there's not going to be any traffic. And sure enough, there was lots of traffic. Yeah, yeah. You just never know. You never know. All right. Well, uh, are you ready for the big uh, tweakonomics? Yeah, yeah. We're going to throw some stuff around here. As you and I know, and it, we, we talked off the air here that I, I had some stuff planned, but um, we're going to go in a different direction here. I'm learning lots about the public radio business here um, on and off the air. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I did have a chance to speak to the guest that I was going to have come on here, but we're going to do something else. Um, I'm going to go jump right in and do my shameless marketing plug that I like to do. Yes. This is uh, how I, um, I, my bright idea was to get uh, sponsors like our good folks at Queen City Cabinetry and uh, CGI Business Solutions over there in Auburn. And you will have to remind me again of the internet company oh, please. adored wi-fi adored wi-fi and they've got a great commercial on your on your radio i really like the production that they did on that yeah and of course the great hop knot across the street at 1000 elm street kenny and family over there which i play at uh friday night and give you guys my muse and my troubadour routine yes um but today i wanted to talk about the folks over at paul's executive car care if you've ever been up on the i guess it'll be the south end of elm street um, yeah, just across from uh, the toy shop and some places over there. I uh, I got into them because I had I bought an old Audi and uh, it was one of these things that sat in the garage for a very long time at some, uh, you know, little old lady from Pasadena, I guess is the uh, <laughs> the, the phrase. Um, and I bought this Audi. It was a white Audi. And but the paint job was just shot because it had been sat. And so I went over there and they buffed it out. And boy, howdy, they uh, they returned me a beautiful car for a price. And I've had a mm. car detailed there. And uh, more recently, I, I drove by with my dear wife, Julie, and there was a little Porsche 911, a silver one, and she saw the look on my face, <laughs> and God uh, bless her, she said, why don't you go back and look at it sometime? <laughs> yeah. She, she really saw the look in my eye. It was the look on my face. I said, it, she will be mine. Oh, yes, she will be mine. <laughs> but did she say that to you with gritted teeth? Or? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It was more to get the look off my face. Yeah. Like, I can't, I can no longer remain to be married to you with this look on your face. Right. So go look at it. And I went and looked at the car and, it, you know, wrong price, wrong time, all, all that kind of stuff. And I've kind of outgrown that, um, you know, let's get a car so girls will look at me on Elm Street type of thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Which really is what, what it comes down to. You know, I've got a perfectly wonderful car, but. Um, the folks down at uh, Paul's Executive Car Care, which is uh, here on uh, 84 Elm Street, which is down the south end of it, uh, just past Market Basket. Those guys do a full range of service, not just sell cars. Uh, they do uh, detailing and uh, work and all kinds of stuff like that. They're they're really good people, and I really enjoy driving by there and, again, getting that far away look <laughs> in my eyes when I see a, a nice automobile. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, that's a lot more passable to my wife than looking at girls or, you yeah. know, it's something, you know what I mean? It's, uh, well, of course. Which, which I don't do. Um, right. No, no, of course not. I don't. No, no. no I never not. do that. No. Right. I don't do that. <laughs> so. 
Good for them. Um, so let's uh, roll on here with uh, Tweakonomics, shall we? Uh, hit your uh, music here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mike Sutter. <laughs> I am somewhat educated in the field of econ economics and uh, somewhat educated in the field of business and uh, have been somewhat successful in both of those. But uh, I wanted to talk to you guys today about, um, we, we've been hearing about inflation and, and I'm coming to you today from a personal perspective. I just got my uh, tax re-evaluation and uh, the nice little abode that I own up in the north end of Manchester that I bought for a certain price, I got this letter in the mail, and I, and I knew it was going to come someday because, you know, tax reevaluations happen. And boy, howdy, did, um, did I get reevaluated. So I, um, and I think I mentioned before on the show that, <laughs> you know, I have nowhere else to go. I could sell the home, and um, yeah, apparently I'd be in very, very good shape, but I have nowhere else to go. But the tax reevaluation thing is, is is a part of life, so I don't want to um, get political, as always. Um, want to stay away from the political side of things. As homes appreciate and inflation kicks in and things like this, um, you're going to get if you own a home, you'll you'll get uh, reassessed. I guess is the is the proper term. And like I said, my wife and I, boy, how did we, we get reassessed? Um, but it's a good thing because we're not going in, going anywhere. But my tax bill now is uh, is a different can of worms. Mm. Um, I, I did have the opportunity to refinance uh, recently because the uh, interest rates are very, very low. Oh, So it's a good thing. So uh, my wife and I cut our 30 down to a 15-year, keeping it somewhat about the same uh, price point as far as what we're paying Wells Fargo's, who's our mortgage, mortgage holder. Wait, so you were able to, and I don't know much, I've never owned a home. Uh, I've always rented, so mm -hmm. I don't know much about this, but did you did you say you were able to cut it down from a 30-year to a 15-year? Yeah, I sure did. For I the mean, same we, payment? We, well, we were probably 10 years deep in the mortgage to begin with. Oh, okay, okay. So, so we didn't just buy the place. We've been there for about 12 years. Okay. Um, Ish, something like that. Yeah. Um, but with the interest rates dropping, um, we were able to refinance Keep about the same payment and uh, cut us uh, cut ourselves down to fifteen wow. uh, fifteen years, which is a wonderful thing, you know. Yeah. So, um, I do want to plug the economy that while it's uh, a lot of folks uh, talk about doom and gloom, like I occasionally do here on this show, um, it, it things are not that bad with with interest rates being down. That's a very good thing. But one thing that will jump up here is my tax bill, and uh, if you know the term escrow, which is how they kind of hold, uh, you know, they take your property taxes and insurance and things like that. Yeah. I don't happen to have PMI. I'm very lucky to, to not have that. But What's what's PMI? Uh, it's mortgage insurance. Okay. So if you put down less than, say, 30% in that range uh, down in a house, uh, you will pay mortgage insurance in the event that you default, that there's insurance to the, the lien holder. Uh, okay. Uh, huh. Stuff like that. So, but... Um, so it's just been very, you know, I we bought the home and we refinanced and kind of don't think about it. You know, we, we write the monthly check, just like renting, you know. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't think too much about it. But when we got the letter from uh, the dear city of New Hampshire here, uh, Manchester, excuse me, um, we're going to get a bump up here in our escrow payment. So, yeah. Um, but but that's a good thing again. You know, when the, when the day comes that uh, we sell or we reverse mortgage or liquidate or what have you, um, it, our house is considerably assessed considerably more than what we bought it for. Right. Um, and that's, it, it's a double-edged sword as we talk about on, you know, with inflation and things like that, it's a double-edged sword. But, um, my gosh, I, I was truly stunned when I opened this letter and saw that, uh, I was a, a good hundred thousand what I had bought the home uh, ahead of what I had bought the home for. Really? Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And I mean, I'm not in one of these. Uh, I, I'm up near Stark Park, but not in one of these places that has a carriage house and yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. The the projected gables and all this stuff. I, I just have a. We have a little condominium actually up there, um, but the the the, val the revaluation of it was uh, tr truly shocking. Huh. Um, the, and how that's going up. But we do have to remember that here in New Hampshire how the state and the cities make their money primarily is on property taxes mm -hmm. uh, and the liquor store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, and the lottery. And beyond yeah. that, the, the, there's, you know, it's the liquor store, the lottery, and, and property taxes. And I'm all for that. I, I feel blessed to live in New Hampshire where there, there, there are no sales taxes, there are no income taxes. Um, and and that's, a, that's a real cool thing. We're very blessed to have this dynamic. I've traveled enough and been to enough other states that um, w w their uh, paradigm is a lot different. And um, I scratched my head that, gosh, I don't want to have to, in Pennsylvania, you have to go to a warehouse to buy beer and liquor. 
Like you have to go really? to a, yeah, well, or you can go to a bar and buy a six pack. Yeah. But there's wow. no there's no going to uh, the what do they have down there a Wawa or Piggly Wiggly no and picking up a six pack or a bottle of Jack Daniels you have to go to a a facility and it's not a liquor store it's, it, this is as I remember here a couple huh. of years ago very very strange um, and then there's the sales taxes like in Massachusetts you know you, you had these sales tax holidays that wow this is a big deal I'm going to go to Bob's Discount Furniture this weekend or Jordan's and buy myself a couch you and I can do this uh, you know. Uh, right down on uh, Willow Street, and we don't yeah. pay sales taxes. Yeah, we have a call. We'll Please grab this. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, Matt. It's Ron. Hey, Ron. Um, I, I I watching your guest, and is is it Brant? Is his first name Brant Lampton? What? I, I don't want to mess it up. Sorry if I am. <laughs> well, Friday nights he's Grant Lampton. Yeah, Grant Lampton <laughs> is my stage name, sir. My name is Mike Sutter here on the Tweakonomics segment. Thank you, thank you. I, uh, I'm really enjoying your show right now. Can I ask you a question that maybe you can answer? Yes, sir. Now, our homes have an assessed value, and it just went up, and we have a, um, an appraised value. And can you tell me, does the appraised value have anything to do with the taxes that we pay or nothing at all? That, that's completely my assumption, sir. And when I read this letter, you're right, is the appraised value... Now, the appraised value, you're talking about a letter that came from the city or the state, correct? Yes. Yeah, th so that that was my assumption when I got this letter. You know, this is different than a, a home appraisal, like you're going to sell it and somebody, a, a firm comes in and gives you an estimated value. This letter that I got, I took at, uh, you know, full-blown truth that this is what they're going to base my taxes on, in, you know, going forward. So that, that, that's my assumption. I, I will tell you that I didn't make it past page one because I was so bamboozled by the, <laughs> by the value that, you know, gosh, do, do my wife and I get divorced and sell the thing and we go our separate <laughs> ways with a pocket full of money? Or, <laughs> <laughs> But it was just the value. To answer your question, that, that's my assumption. And, and if somebody knows differently, please call in and, and, and correct us. But to answer your question, that, that, that's my understanding. Well, you know something? I really wish to God I could read lips because it seems like something, for, for some reason, so many times when I call in on Matt's show, I get a volume that goes up and down and up and down. So I'm not going to ask you to repeat it, but I only heard half of what you said, and it's a, it's a pity. I don't know what it is. Um, I tried to put my phone in a more, you know, in an area closer to my ear, but I don't know what it is. It just are you, are you I, listening on a car one phone? second I can hear you clearly, and then I don't. Are you listening on a car phone by chance? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, so I have the same issue. I call in once a week to talk to Mike, uh, Matt and his guests, and I get the same effect, that it, it goes in and out and up and down. So I try to always turn my radio off and just stick to my phone, but I hope you heard the better part of them. Oh, you mean Bluetooth? Mm -hmm. is, he, is he listening Amen. through Bluetooth? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the Bluetooth, yeah. yeah. Yeah, could be. Oh, I shouldn't have said car phone, though. No, sir, it wasn't on a car phone. It's <laughs> a cell phone. I'm sorry. All right. Well, I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> but Ron, thank you. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? You don't have to repeat it, but it improved when you got closer to the mic. Um, it improved dramatically. Sure. All right. And uh, I, I, too, also um, went from a 30 to a 15 at 3%, and uh, nothing changed. Um, it's the same rate and everything else. So, you know, if anybody else can jump on the bandwagon, just... It's, you know, it's, it's the way to go. Now's the time to do it. I, I, I tell you, as an economics guy, it was... Uh, is something that uh, I, I really, um, you know, my wife and I sat down one night and nobody likes to talk about the mortgage or the rent or the, mm. any of that stuff, but it was really like, we really need to go through this process and pay the points if we need to or, or do whatever you have to do. But we are now uh, 15 years to the end of our mortgage, and that's a, yeah. a beautiful yeah, thing. Way to go. And you know what's nice, and I'm sure yours is the same, um, it doesn't have a clause where early payoff you get uh, penalized. You pay off early, you save money all around. Absolutely. If you have the ability to do that, uh, I'm not a guy who plays scratch tickets or Powerball or anything, but perhaps I should do that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, whatever it takes. I mean, if, if, whatever it is, you know, I mean, I, everybody's income is different, but I mean, if you could, you know, after four, three or four years, just be able to uh, pay off one year, uh, if, you know, by adding a little here and a little there. I don't know. And anyway, so I'm going to listen to the rest of your show and thanks. Uh, thanks. It's always a pleasure to, uh, your economics feedback. I appreciate you calling in, sir. All right, Ron. Thank you for the take call. Take care, guys. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
So what is the difference between an, ass an assessment and an appraisal? Is, is, is the assessment is done by, by the city and, and an appraisal is done by? The appraisal will be done uh, by a company if you were going to sell it, okay? So let's say uh, Julie and I run off to uh, Paris here. We're going to dump our home. And uh, to put it on the market, we need to have an appraisal done. Oh. So uh, a third party, not my real estate agent, not my interested uh, buyer's uh, real estate agent, but a third party would come in and do a you know a home inspection. And actually, the home inspection is separate. But an appraisal is uh, what the market value should be. Okay. Uh, but the city of Manchester, for tax purposes, does their own, um, not on any schedule, um, and it doesn't happen all the time. But it's just one of those things that lurks in the back of my head that like the day's yeah. going to come, and the day came uh, this week <laughs> where yeah. I got the letter, and we think your home is worth X Y Z, and. Again, it's the double-edged sword of uh, that, that. That's great, but oh my gosh, now you're going right. to tax me at this rate. Um, <laughs> right. Why can't why can't we keep it at the rate it was before? But um, right, right. You know, inflation and appreciation. You know, inflation has such a negative connotation, um, but appreciation is is a real thing. You know that. Yeah. Uh, you know, my parents bought their home uh, when we moved to New England and Salem, New Hampshire, for sixty five thousand dollars. Wow. Not one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. Sixty five thousand dollars. Thirty years later, they sold it for you know two hundred thousand dollars. So that, wow. that that's appreciation. That's a lot of oh, appreciation. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, and you know, the real estate is one of those vehicles. Um, our former president <laughs> Donald Trump uh, has made a lot of money in that arena of, um, you know, real estate appreciating. When you do it in the short term, it's called speculation, which is gambling, basically. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you buy something and hold on to it. Um, you know, some of the properties, I live up in the north end and on the corner of Daniel Webster Highway in Campbell, there used to be a gas station there and it was another gas station and it was defunct and it was just kind of a lot. I think they're building a, a convenient MD or something like that. But I guarantee you the people who built the gas station there 15, 30, 20 years ago, wherever it was, uh, paid a heck of a lot less than this, uh, what I think is going to be, again, a, an urgent care or something like that. Mm. Um, but it's a beautiful corner piece of property that in, in Manchester is rare to find. We, oh, thought we had a call. Um, yeah, Tom Blanchard in the chat room says, up and up and up goes the value. Yeah, no, that makes sense, though, where it's uh, it's a double-edged sword. And, and I mean, you just never – you're kind of at their mercy, right, uh, in that sense. Uh, you know, they can just uh, arbitrarily decide. I mean, as far as the assessment part of it, they can just arbitrarily decide, you know, well, we it, think it's it, worth more. It is more. somewhat arbitrary. I mean, I didn't have somebody come knock on my door – and kind of look around and, you know, say, this this is what we're going to uh, charge you. Right. We have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, this is Mary Broadfront. I heard his, I heard his angelic voice, so I had to call. But um, I think your guest kind of addressed the question I was going to ask, that isn't the appraisal value of your home different than the market value? I think like isn't appraisal like it's it's footage it's this it's that but is the market value based on what other houses in your neighborhood or your area are selling for which so the market depends, you're absolutely would... you're absolutely right my friend the the market value uh, you know versus an appraised value is very different um, again I'm I'm right. up in the north end and there's a little cottage cape they call it that had an open concept that sold uh, in the neighborhood of a half million dollars. But oh I, that was based on things like location, location, location. Right. <laughs> um, location. Thing. Yeah, schools, amenities, like, yeah, whatever. You're yes, ma'am. The it, highway, whatever. Yeah, so it was based very yeah. much on, um, as, Ma as Matt said, arbitrary almost. Um, but it has to do right. with kind of um, intangible things rather than, uh, okay, the brick and mortar of this building is worth uh, 165000 or something like that. Um, it's, exactly. you know, it's why, uh, you know, you go down to the Cape Cod and things like this are out near the shore in New Hampshire, why the, why the homes are, you know, you can have a little shack on the, on the shore, uh, but it's worth a half million dollars and that same little shack here, uh, in the certain part of Manchester would be worth peanuts. So you, you're absolutely right. It, I mean, if I'm answering your question properly. Okay. Yeah, you, you absolutely are. And I think you kind of addressed that before when I was just listening and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm too late. But yeah, because I thought like that was like a little difference. But I I agree because I actually didn't have a mortgage. But when the rates went down so low, mm -hmm. I just refinanced for minimal and paid off my kids' college. So 
I could sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Now you paid so off their college because so. the appraisal the, the appraisals aren't cheap either. I mean, that's like four or five hundred dollars thing just to have. I mean, a private appraisal. A private appraisal, and and I got to tell you, I, um, it's a heck of a good living. I I knew a guy who appraised one of the houses that I had about twenty years ago. And he pulled up in a very, very, very fancy sports car. And I said, so how do, what do you do? And he's like, well, this is my retirement job. And, yes, I make a very comfortable living. And that's why you're paying me. you're paying me. for a new set of tires. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is why you're paying for my you know, $700 set of tires, just the front tires, yep. uh, to get my house appraised. Yep. But that was, again, yep. uh, I think as I was trying to talk to Matt about, it's, a, it's an independent uh, thing that I had done that my real estate agent had said, let's get your house appraised. And then get it on the market, which right. of course I wanted to be in the, the the highest positive direction that I could. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. Because I think like a few years ago it was it was like the rates were so low, and they still are. I don't know what the rates are now, but I don't care. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Yeah. Um, and it was painless. Well, However, d- d- depending on your credit, we're we're in the the threes, you know, in the mid threes, something like that. It, it does yep. depend on your credit history and things like that. Um, right. Matt, Matt and I had talked about uh, private mortgage insurance, the PMI, um, which has to do with um, you know the the bank and ins- you're insuring the bank in case that you uh, split exactly. split town or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it is interesting. It's very interesting, and uh, yeah, because I got my whatever the city one, and I, I don't even want to say it on on air, but it's like I was. Kind of, it was definitely higher than it had been, <laughs> yeah. but not as high as I thought it could be. Oh. So we'll just go with that. So even if you had to spend a couple of bucks, and I'm I'm assuming you had to, it's worth it in the long run to get yourself down to 15 years rather than a 30, correct? Right. You know, yeah. Even if you had to pay yep. points or, you know, sometimes they, they, they'll add a thousand bucks on here for, via points or mortgage fees or things like this. But uh, yeah. if you sit down and do the math, and again, as a an economics person who's terrible at math. Once I did the math, I was like, all right, so the, this this will equal fifteen, thirty, forty thousand dollars at the end of the life of the mortgage. Um and, and that's real money. That's um you know my exactly. in, in my case uh, But my, at the my end reco- of the mortgage, like what do you think your house will probably be worth more? Like it's you know, do you bite the apple now or later? Like it's just Right. Well, according to the city yeah. of Manchester, I'm sitting pretty right now. So, <laughs> see this new watch. Oh, I don't know if you're watching you. us in the chat room, but <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> but but you know, where, awesome. where the heck else am I going to go? I, I I got to a point mm-hmm. in my life that I was very 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 lucky that I wasn't having to pay rent by choice. You know, I always thought right. rent was I'm kind of throwing it into the wind, and I I was able to have an okay. asset that I look forward to paying off, and that's really my primary asset when I retire, if right. I'm able to retire. Uh, that's going to be yep. my wife and I's primary asset. Um, so uh, I, I yeah. look at it. It's only going to get worth more as opposed to losing money. Like, that's what I felt like with my kids' college. I'm like, yes. you know what? That money is just going. Like, it's already spent. Like, just at least if you hold on to this asset, yes. it's only going to make you money as opposed to losing money. That's right. Yeah. Um, and just another question, too. I don't know if any, either of you know it. When they, they do they, the reassessment, whatever, the tax rate that that doesn't go up till next year, correct? It's not like in December you're going to get a bill for like uh, another hundred. That, that's my <laughs> like understanding as well. It, it'll be it'll be for the next uh, it, whether it's a calendar year or a fiscal year, oh. but it's in the future for sure. Gotcha. Um, but I, I, I don't. Okay. In, at least in my case, when I looked into it, my taxes are held in what they call escrow. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, okay. it, yes, it, I do. In other yep. words, I pay fifteen hundred dollars or you know eighteen hundred dollars a month. That includes my mortgage oh payment, my and then the the a portion of the taxes that go into this escrow, right. which is a held account. See, and, yeah, mine um, just I, mine. I just like pay the bill, but I'm like, gee, here's uh-huh. the reverse. <laughs> like, that's well, like, I, I'm just I'm curious. I, I get that bill twice a year too, and it's always like, okay, you owe the city of Manchester five thousand dollars. Like, whoa, 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 and uh, right. you know, it took me right. a, a, a long yep. time to say, okay, that the, the, my mor- exactly. mortgage company is taking care of that. And I love. Uh, and I love how they do it. Like my birthday is in the end of May, so yeah. we always get it right then. When you have to register the cars, you have to do all that, and the tax bill. And then the other one comes right near Christmas. I'm like, can you guys just stagger it, please? Oh wow, <laughs> yeah, that's stop sucks. the bleeding. <laughs> so you don't have your taxes in escrow, am I correct by saying that? Do not. Okay. No, do not. Okay. So I just will pay that. I set it aside, um, but yeah, I don't have it in escrow. 
Uh-huh. Okay. But the mortgage is relatively low, so I'm not like I just by paying off, like refinancing, like refinancing the house which didn't have a debt, mm-hmm. um, and to pay off the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar whatever college bills. Good um, don't laugh mm-hmm. at me. I, no, I saved no, myself I, I, about five hundred dollars a month. So I just take that money, Jesus. pretend like I always had it, like mm-hmm. I never had it. Excuse me. Right. Stick in the bank, and then when the bill comes in, there you go. You yep. pay registration for the car, you pay the tax bill, and there you go. Yep. yep. It's forced savings, I guess, is what it is. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you calling in. Yep. What's your name again, please? Well, I appreciate your conversation. My name, Mary. Mary. Ron knows me. Yeah, he, 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 I think he thinks I tickle his fancy because my uh-huh. voice and everything. Well, I appreciate so, your calling. I'll probably call in again. But thank you for all the advice and all the the knowledge. So you guys have a great night. All right, Mary. You th- too, Mary. All th- the best. Th- Cheers. Th- thank okay, you so much you for the care. call. Thanks. Bye. 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 All right, that was our friend Mary. Uh, we could probably sneak one more call in if anyone wants to chime in at 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. And sure enough, we have a call. Grab this. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, Matt. This is Ronnie. Yeah, I guess Mary knows me well about calling back in. <laughs> but what I'm asking for is um, these tax increases, um, is that something that we can apply to our taxes at the end of the year and get a, um, oh, what do you know what I mean? When you, when you, you I forget all this on the, uh, I can't say what I wanted to say. Um, not reductions, you know, when you, you, at the end of the year, your tax accountant or whoever looks mm-hmm. at it, oh, you know, this, you could, you could deduct this, deduct this, deduct this. Mm-hmm. So the amount that's going up, is that something that we can deduct towards our taxes? Well, my understanding is number one, you can appeal their assessment. Oh, um, I don't know how uh, successful that process would go. <laughs> my my thought is probably not very well. Yeah, but um, <laughs> you know it, it, what they do look at is so I'm in a condominium development, so I'm not allowed to, let's say, put a gazebo in my backyard, or you know, I could enclose my back porch. I do I do have a back porch. But it's the type of thing that if you put a swimming pool in that you didn't have a year ago, or um, you doubled the size of your driveway, or you know, not something trivial, trivial like put a basketball net up or something. But if you make significant improvements, you put an addition on. They are certainly going to uh, look at that to do it. But you do have a process where you can say, "Oh, you say my house is worth two hundred thousand. I only paid a hundred thousand for it." Mm. Uh, and even with the the progress of time and appreciation, I'm going to contest it. Um, I assume you get the letter, sir, if you own your home, uh, that you got the letter here and that uh, that I did. That there is a process where you can go and say, "Hey, look." Um, you know, I'm going to challenge the value. No, no, but I, I'm not sure if you caught my message or, or yes. what I was asking. Uh-huh. At the end of the year, when we do our taxes, yes. is this a write-off? Is this increase something we can write off? That's what I was trying to ask. I, I'm not an accountant. I uh, had worked in accounting for a long time, but I do believe mortgage um, mortgage interest is a, uh, a deduction, but I hmm. would talk to a CPA, but... My understanding of the, the, the years that I've owned a home, that the mortgage interest is a write-off, um, if that's what we're talking about, the same thing? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so your mortgage interest, um, you know, which I would imagine if you are in the ballpark where I am or have refinanced like I have, um, is is really not that high. You know, I'm in the th- mid threes or low threes. Um, uh, but, you know but, something? Yes, I sir. just was got so, conf- not confused, but so... <laughs> Wrapped up at what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking clearly. <laughs> yes, mortgage interest can be deducted, but you can't deduct taxes. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I thought maybe when your taxes went up that that was something that you could write off. Uh, I, I haven't got a clue on why I was thinking that. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the actual interest that you're paying on the principal of your loan that can be um, yes, yes, deducted. Yes, yes. Um, but but I, I would encourage everybody to have a heck of a good CPA. Uh, it's worth the money spent. I've been through... Uh, uh, Hades and back to, to be diplomatic um, with with um, CPAs and folks who know what they're talking about and how they do it and how to protect yourself. Um, you know, it's often said that people who have lots and lots of money pay very little taxes, and that's the absolute truth, and that's another whole program. Right. Uh, I would also encourage people to go over their um, insurance policies, make sure that their house is insured for the value of today's market, not you know, 20 years ago when you bought the house. So Excellent point. 
Excellent point, especially in the light of the uh, you know reassessment here that I've had. Um, uh, that's an excellent point that it rings through in my head right now. You know, am I insured to what the city of Manchester says? You know, if I get the roof blown off, do uh, am I insured to that level? Uh, what the city of Manchester says I have now. So excellent point. All right, we got to wrap up. We're almost out of time, Ron. Thank, thank you, you, Ron. Thank you so much for the All call. All right, thanks, guys. All right, you guys. Right, see you later, Mary. All right, See you, Mary. <laughs> All right, Ron leaves us. Uh, we are just about out of time. Uh, Mike, anything else you wanted to mention on the subject before we wrap up? Uh, not on the subject. I've got some stuff coming down the pike here next week. Um, uh, like I said, I've learned a little bit about uh, your radio structure here and uh, how you guys do what you do. And uh, I, I've dug my teeth into some stuff. We're going to dig into something called essentialism next week. Uh, by the author Greg McKeon that I really have learned a lot about, uh, but I didn't have the time here to talk about that today. I want to thank Mary Russell up at the um, uh, library up in Concord, the state library, who kind of turned me on to this stuff, has really enlightened me, and I'm going to dig into that next week. And then, as always, I do want to mention our sponsor uh, for this show, The Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street in Manchester. I will be there as my uh, stage name, Grant Lampton, on Friday night. Please come by. We have a heck of a lot of fun. It's a, uh, a fantastic, diverse crowd, and uh, everybody's happy. There's, it's really one of the coolest places in Manchester, and I'm very lucky to play over there. So I will uh, strap on my guitar and uh, try to croon to you and hold your attention. And if I don't hold your attention, they always have one screen has a Cartoon Network, and then there's often sports, mm. and then there's often uh, some sort of news program. But I really had a lot of fun playing to uh, the U.S. Open tennis match oh. and um, <laughs> Adventure Time at the same time. Oh, there you go. Oh, I like Adventure Time. I do, too. I haven't seen it in a long time. But all right. Uh, thank you so much, Mike Sutterth. With, You're uh, very welcome. Tweakonomics. And uh, if you miss any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org. Awesome. And on uh, my website, mattconnerton.com. And that's going to do it uh, for us for now. I will talk at y'all a little bit later. Bye, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>